Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the final word. Oh, I said final world. Uh, the final word. I'm here with Gary Spain. He's over in you're in Cardiff now, travelled up from London. And uh, obviously we're at Wembley last night. We're here to talk about that game. A 3 0 loss to England in Wembley Stadium. Uh, Gary, just kind of obviously with the lineup, we were m missing Seamus Coleman, James McCarthy, Aaron Connolly, to name a few, Callum Robinson as well. Uh, but what were your thoughts going into the game, obviously over there? And what time did you kind of hear when players were going to be really, especially like Seamus and James? Yeah, so it got it got drip fed to me during the day. Uh, I heard about James uh, reasonably early. Uh, Seamus, I only discovered when I saw the lineup, and then I said, looked at the said Seamus is a sub. That's strange. And then I looked at the subs, and he wasn't there. So um, I, I I only realised that when I was already in Wembley. Um, yeah, I, I, you can't really criticise. I suppose the team that was picked based on the the players players available. I suppose the only one I thought that was unlucky to lose out was Daryl O'Shea, but. Um, and possibly, well, I suppose Robbie Brady as well. But having said that, Jay Malumbi as well. So, yeah, but it was a friendly. We have two competitive games coming up. So I, I'd hate to be critical of a manager picking a team for a friendly in advance of two competitive games. Even though for me, I suppose for many others, and England is, is different. It's never, it's never really a friendly. So that's, that's my one caveat on this. Yeah, well, I suppose we, we we will discuss obviously the lineup itself because obviously we had Randolph and goal, Christy right back. You had Egan and Duffy centre backs, and then you had Matt Doherty at left back. And um, then in midfield, you had Jeff Hendrick in a deeper row with Howrahan and Alan Brown, and then a front three of Daryl Horgan, Callum O'Dowda, and Adam Ede up front. But I think a lot of people were questioning the fact that McLean wasn't in the lineup because you would have thought a game of this magnitude. You know, he'd be the first name on the sheet because, but then again, is, is he protecting him? Maybe you would wonder. Yeah, I think the, I mean, the day after Remembrance Day at Wembley against England, um, maybe, maybe it wasn't the right day for, for James. Um, no, he did okay when he came on. I, I, I suppose maybe the concern was that, uh, he could lose, lose the head a bit, which he can be inclined to do. And maybe dive into a few tackles. Um, having said that, I mean it was probably a straight choice between probably himself and Callum O'Dowd, I suppose. And uh, I don't think Callum O'Dowd did enough to to warrant his place ahead of James. And certainly, if you're if your shout would be James for Cardiff, it'd probably be probably be mine as well with the players available. Yeah, well, I was, just, I was just kind of surprised by that. I mean, I know we were depleted in terms of players and stuff like that. And, you know, the lineup made sense of kind of what he had there. You know, I was a bit surprised with the front three. Um, I did expect Ida to play, and I did have him in my starting 11 show. But um, the other two on on the flanks, I was just a bit surprised about, to be honest. But, look, it, it's one of those things when I seen it, I was just, right, that's the team. We have to get behind it. And, I mean... We looked okay early on, for, and, I mean, and I mean like the first 10 minutes, we didn't look that bad. I thought we were kind of, we were stuck to our task, we were sitting deep, but we were trying to make things happen on the counter-attack. Daryl Horgan getting in, I think, once, and uh, whipping a ball into the box. I think O'Dowd it was, who nearly got nearly got on yeah. the end of it to, to score, but the defence, and that was kind of... Horgan had started really brightly and then just completely fizzled out after that. And I found that was the case with a lot of players. John Egan obviously went off early with, uh, a con well, I think it's a concussion, but it was a head injury anyway. So he went off and Daryl O'Shea came in in place of him. And then not long after, we could see the, the first goal. But kind of what were your thoughts in the stadium at that point, just before we conceded? I actually thought uh, I was very happy with the, the opening. I, I, I'd be more impressed to with Daryl Horgan than you. Now, he definitely faded, but I thought I thought he had a decent first half. Um, certainly, they didn't really feature after the break. Maybe he faded a little bit in the, the, the early stage of the first half, but um, there was, we had a lot worse than him on the pitch. That's that's what I'll say anyway. I think he did enough to, to warrant his inclusion. Um, it was actually great defending Maurice James to deny Callum O'Dowda, and who knows what could have happened had we gone ahead. 
And we'd also survived a flurry of corners um, before that, but defended those pretty well. And uh, so I was I was pretty happy with the way the opening exchanges were going. I mean, I was looking at our lineup and saying, yeah, we're missing a lot of players. Okay, England definitely played a lot of second string players, but you're looking at players that are still first choice at, at top clubs. So uh, it might be a weakened England side, but still it's a very strong side. And, they're, they're, and, and maybe it's more of a problem with them in that they're all playing for the positions rather more than the established players. So, yeah, I was I was happy with how the, the opening period went. And although it was a disappointing goal to concede. Yeah, well, talk me through the goal from your, from your point of view and uh, kind of from your from where you were watching it in the stadium because it was obviously different from watching it on TV. It looked, from the TV, it looked like Shane Duffy probably could have done more to prevent it. Um, and he don't really see him get bullied that much uh, at all in the air. So it was kind of odd to see that. And it kind of coincides with the fact that at the moment he's just not really in good form at all. And that was kind of another thing that players or people wanted to kind of throw the boot in on him on that one. Yeah, I, I, I think Shane should have done. I think Harry, it was Harry Winks, I think, did very well out on the right-hand side. I, I was actually down the other end. My my seat in the press box was almost on the goal line at the other end. So the, probably the TV had a better view. But uh, Harry Winks did very well on the right-hand side, uh, whipped, in a, whipped in a good cross. And yeah, I, I, I think Shane Duffy, or the Shane Duffy of old, would have dealt with it better. Harry Maguire certainly attacked the ball and, and won the ball. And I think he should have been second favourite for that. And, uh, well, from an England point of view, it was a good goal, but um, I, I think it was, it was a very disappointing one for us, us to concede. And I don't think Shane had a great game. I mean, you mentioned his form. Yeah, I think you're talking about his form for Celtic because, yeah, that has been very disappointing. I thought he'd been doing fine for us. Um, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he was poor for us in either September or October. I mean, I, I was very happy with his form, um, but last night I think he had a poor game and was more of his his Celtic form. Now, of course, if you're not playing well for your club, it's not. Um, it's very hard to turn that around and uh, for the national team. But yeah, it was a poor goal to concede, and I think that changes the complexion of the complexion of the game. Then it allows England to settle down, settle into the rhythm of their passing. Uh, and we got a bit of a chasing for a while after that. And uh, the second goal was coming then as well. I mean, we were, yeah, for, for a period after that first goal, I think we we just got taken apart really between the, I suppose if you want to take it after the first goal, right until they, they scored the penalty in the second half, they were, they were totally on top. Uh, if you want to move on to the second goal, our old nemesis, Jack Greedish, uh, he was heavily involved. I thought he had a great game, actually. Um, he was heavily involved, uh, set up Jaden Sancho, and it was a, a lovely finish. It was a great goal, lovely low finish um, into Randolph's bottom left-hand corner. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously with the, with, with the first goal going in, I was kind of thinking to myself, all right, well, we have to try, like, keep the scores down because... What happens with us now is when we concede, the heads just drop and we just don't look like we can score a goal. It's very, very frustrating, to be honest. So at that point, I was thinking, oh, here we go. I thought if we could maybe score a goal first, it we may have affected the game better. But ultimately, that wasn't going to be the case. And you could feel this, though, when England scored the first goal, you were kind of thinking, well, I know I was thinking to myself, oh, no, how many is it going to be? Then, obviously, Sancho, he gets his goal. I think... My question would be, why is Jeff Hendrick the man who has to come across there? To, where is Cyrus Christie on that goal? Um, I think a few people have kind of been quite critical of Cyrus as well. Just from a defensive point of view, I know he's good going forward, but from a defensive point of view, and people are often criticise Matt Doherty for his defensive performances, and they thought he was excellent last night at left back. Um, but I felt as though Christie just kind of showed, and England exploited a lot of his weaknesses in my opinion, and uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm being too critical, maybe it was a good England goal, but I'm kind of looking at it from ourselves, and we pride ourselves, 
you know, where we, we always have on kind of being good defensively and, you know, being our shape being our main thing. We, once we have our shape right, we tend to be very hard to break down and stuff like that. I think once the first goal went in, I don't know whether it was Stephen Kenny's tactics to try and maybe, you know, push ourselves up a bit or try and get about them a little bit more. But I felt as though when the first goal went in, we just couldn't get it over our own half. Then they get the goal. But my, my question would be, where is Cyrus Christie on that goal? Yeah, look, I, I, I think you've touched on an old failing of Cyrus. He's very good going forward, but he's suspect defensively and didn't have a good game last night. Um, I think you have to give credit to England as well, because when they got the goal, I think they probably gave them the confidence to, to up it level as well. And I don't think we could actually, I don't think we could live with them. I mean, uh, unfortunately, uh, it's, it's hard to say it, but they were, they were much better than us. And I mean, they, were, uh, they, they basically took control of the game. And uh, the second goal was probably coming. And even the, the third goal was coming as well in the second half. So, yeah, I mean, I've said it before. I think it's obvious. Our, our, our strong point in recent years, even long before Stephen Kenny, has always been our defence. Our back five or back six, if you include the holding midfield player. And we don't concede too many goals. We've had problems scoring goals before Stephen Kenny took charge. Right? We've never been... We've never been prolific since Robbie Keane retired. So we haven't really replaced uh, Robbie Keane. We don't have a striker of that calibre. And that's, um, well, once once in a hundred years, possibly, type of striker. Um, so we probably need goals coming from, from all over the pitch. And... Uh, yeah, so you're saying you once we fell behind, you thought it was a matter of keeping the score down. Yeah, I, I wasn't as pessimistic initially when I went behind when we went behind, but then I, I my view is then I think England actually just up to another level and just I suppose they relaxed and they they really played, um, and they just took us apart. I mean. Uh, I suppose it, maybe one, one point that needs to be made is what we've been talking about moving away from a traditional British style of football, which which we, let's be frank, we played under Mick McCarthy and Martin O'Neill. But England don't play British football. I mean, in fairness to England and Gareth Southgate, they play a lovely brand of football. They pass the ball very well. They've got some really, really good players. I'm not sure from their point of view whether they're right, good enough right at the top level to beat a Spain or a France when it comes to the quarterfinals, semifinals of a major tournament. But um, certainly their their levels above us at the moment with the players they have and the way they play the game. And and that showed um, in the, 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 let's say, the second half of the first half and the first 15, 20 minutes of the second half, I, I thought we were just chasing shadows. That's sad. I thought we were just outclassed. Yeah, well, we'll come on to that now because I think, you know, we were, I, I mentioned there, like, we were struggling to get out of our own half. And I'm sure, like, there's been a lot of negativity online, especially, you know, any of the posts we've put up, there's been negativity galore, just, you know, absolutely slating the team and absolutely slating anybody who backs the manager in any way. I, th I think it's something that it, it, it is literally 50, 50 of the fans, like 50% are backing them, 50% are impatient. And I and look, you have to appreciate both sides of the argument. Some, some of it is quite toxic and I stay away from it, but some of it, you know, backing and seeing signs of, like last night wasn't a sign of um, progress or anything like that. I think, Stephen Kenny probably wanted to see what he could get out of playing a team that are in the top five in the world, probably. I d that's the only thing I can think of of any reason why he would want to play them, other than the fact that they're, you know, a lot of the players play in England and it would have been safer to play there, obviously, since then. Alan Brown has been tested po got positive, sorry, for COVID. Um, but, like, I just look at our team and I'm going in half time 2 0, and I was thinking, all right, well, you know, if it stays 2-0, this isn't too bad of a result for us if um, we can keep the score down or whatever. 
I mean, we were kept in a few times. There was a few last-ditch blocks, and I, I felt as though the defence still kept going. I thought Dara O'Shea was actually a real bright spark in the team, and I know he went right back then after after a while with the subs, and, which will come to it. But I thought when he played centre-back, he was zipping the ball around nice and quick and fast and trying to make things happen around the pitch. But I just felt as though he was let down by the players around him, and the players around him didn't show any sort of you know optimism or anyone getting the ball by the scruff of the neck, which I think is what exactly we were lacking. And I think you've seen that when Malumbi came on. Again, that's something we will come to. But just when we look at that, 2-0, and we're under the cosh constantly. And then Saka goes down the line, takes on Cyrus Christie. And an absolutely needless foul in the box for a penalty. And you're just thinking to yourself, why are you doing that? Such a lazy man's efforts. Like, he could, he could have just shown him down the line. Like, it was absolutely yeah. no need for it whatsoever. And you, you're just thinking to yourself, you, you've basically just said to yourself, all right, you know, you're not needed here because Darrow O'Shea is going to fill in at that right-back position. Dominic Cavalloon scores the penalty. I don't really want to talk about their goals too much. I mean, they happened, and that's, that's about it. It was a great penalty. And uh, probably the only time I'll want to see him uh, not score uh, in a blue jersey. But anyway, uh, he scored, and... We're going in 3-0 then. And then they were starting to get momentum. They were making subs. We obviously made subs on the 60-minute mark. I mean, um, Kevin Long came on. And Cyrus Christie went off. Dar O'Shea went right full then. And then we had uh, James McLean and Robbie Brady came on. And O'Dowda and Horgan went off. So, um, you can see Stephen was just trying to give the lads a run at that point. And maybe try and get a goal back or some sort of consolation. That was my thinking of those substitutions. Anyway, what were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, look, you're three alone at that stage and you're getting a chasing. Uh, yeah, it's it's probably give the lads a run. I mean, I think things were going so badly at that stage. You probably had to change things up. I, I agree with the penalty first as well. That was a it was a stupid challenge. That was right in front of me. And I still said, oh, don't follow him. Don't. I could see it. And it was just, oh... And I, 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 I'll be frank, you're right about Darrow O'Shea, I mean, as an option, but we have Seamus Foreman and Matt Doherty at options at right back as well. I meant I think, as a third choice, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I think it's probably Cyrus Christie would only be an option at right back if we're chasing a game, if we're attacking or something like that. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, Darrow O'Shea has to be a real option at centre back as well. Um, Kevin Long, I thought, it, it did fine when he comes on and he, he hasn't left us down. Um, he, he's definitely an option, something to work, something to look at, something to work on as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think Stephen used all six subs. I think it was probably the right thing to do with a friendly. It was give people a chance. Quite a few of them actually did put their hands up. Kevin Long put his hands up. Jay Malumby put his hands up. He did well. Um, uh, Ronan Curtis had a bit of a spark about him. I think he got one of our we, was it two efforts on target, and one of them was his. At least he he made Henderson make a save. Um, so they at least put their hands up and it may be be considered for inclusion. Um, actually, you, I, I'd be interested to see your starting eleven show for Wales because I think uh, people who who played and maybe didn't play will uh, maybe ha have an impact on that. I'm sure Stephen has a lot of food for thought on what players he's going to use for the next two games. But um, yeah, so it's uh, uh, James McLean as well when he came on, uh, he did fine. I, I don't think he he really did enough, but in one, one decent cross uh, near the end, but I don't know if he did enough, or he did better than Callum O'Dowda, but I don't know if he did enough to kind of put his hand up and say, I should be playing every game. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, obviously, the, later on in the game, those subs came on, uh, you know, Malumbi and, um, and Ronan Curtis. I thought when the two of them came on, they, they gave us some sort of spark, which we, we were lacking. McLean, he didn't really do anything for me. Um, I would still probably have in the back of my mind the fact that he got sent off against Wales the last time. He has a bit of a history. Obviously, he scored that uh, that important goal to get us into that playoff that time for the, for the World Cup. So, there's that as well. So, uh, it, it's it's a tough one. I definitely think he did more than O'Dowda anyway the time that he was on the pitch. I think O'Dowda, for me, I just wonder how he keeps on 
getting into that team. He just shows no emotion. He doesn't show anything ability wise. Like he's fast. That's about all I can say about him. I don't see him crossing balls in. I don't see him taking on players. I don't see him affecting the games in any of the games he's played under Stephen o- or Stephen Kenny. I almost said Stephen well, Kenny. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily be there. No, I, I. I thought he was. I. I didn't think he had a good game last night. Uh, if I remember back, I think he had a very good half against Bulgaria in in Stephen's first game. Yeah, but you're, and I mean, he had if flashes. You're not, if, you're go, if you're going for a half, Gary, I mean that's not good to anybody. Yeah, I. I, I know Paul well for the mean, whole game, and he regularly hasn't turned up for Ireland. Yeah, I, I he's probably one of those frustrating players that can look really, really good at times, and you think, yeah, there's a real player there, and then he he just totally fades out of games. So, yeah, um, I don't know. It's uh, what. You, what do you say? I mean, I don't think James McLean played particularly well. I mean, you mentioned his goal in Cardiff. Yeah, he scored many crucial goals for us, the goal in Vienna as well. But you're actually going back about three years when he was probably our standout player, our best player at the time. Uh, that's not the James McLean we're seeing in recent times. Um, so it, it's probably the options. I, I was actually very impressed with Daryl Horgan for quite a while last night, but he faded as well. So. I don't know, do you maybe start two of them and bring two off the bench if they're not doing it? Um, well, I think it's something that we'll be doing them shows uh, you know, later on, so we don't need to really worry about that right now. But I, I, like, from overall, we'll, we'll look at the match facts here. They're going to come up on screen there. So obviously ball possession, 64% to 36%. Total shots, 13 to 2. Shots on target five and then for us two which the first one was on the 75th minute from alan brown shots off target eight to one corners 12 to two um they're the probably only real notable um facts there but i think that just kind of shows like we were completely dominated and um i think i do think people need to get off the manager's back i mean he hasn't had the players that he probably wanted at his disposal um, in any of the games that we've played so far, I mean, he's picked a team. Well, maybe he has in the first couple of games, but that was pre-season. But other than that, I don't think he really has. And I think once he gets his first starting eleven, that he that we, you know when, when he has a starting eleven that we can go, oh, that's his best starting eleven. I don't think he even knows his best starting eleven, and he's been tinkering and tampering because he's had to with so many players that. You know these two games. It is really unpredict- unpredictable who we'll go with, um, coming up. But as far as the the England game, I mean, I think it's come and gone now. I think it's good to get it out of the way. I think it's good to test ourselves against someone like that. I know there's always going to be that uh derby factor to it, but I think I actually think Stephen Kenny was actually looking at this like a friendly, and he was thinking, right, well, we're going to test ourselves against really good opposition and see where we're at. And I think. And we didn't really touch on it. the difference in midfield when Malumbi came on, just someone who actually carried the ball, which is something that we just don't have. And I think he is an absolute starter for me against Wales, which again, we will speak about, but just what he brings to the team. I mean, you're looking at Hendrick and Howard for the whole game. It's just sideways backwards and you know, bar one or two passes by Hendrick. Everything was just safe. Everything was safe and we couldn't get out of our own half. Again, I just think it's a game that we just need to forget about now. It's came and gone. We focus on Wales on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. What can you say? I mean, in fairness, I don't think Stephen Kenny probably wanted the game. I think it just made logistical sense because England's friendly was cancelled. They needed a game. Our other option was play away to Bosnia, which would have been a bit of a disaster trying to get players released and if clubs could have put pressure, pressure on players not to travel and things like that. And we could have lost them for Wales and Bulgaria then as well. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we just move on and forget about it. I don't know how much he will learn, will have learned. I definitely agree with Jim Mumby. He, For me, he, he has to be a starter now. He has impressed any time he's played. I don't think he was necessarily dropped last night. I'd say it's a case of Stephen was looking at the couple of competitive games up ahead. And uh, I, I suppose the real priority now has been to has to be to avoid relegation in the Nations League. But 
Um, yeah, look, we played them. It was a chance for the players to play at Wembley. We we got an absolute tonking by England and uh, our first defeat against them in 35 years, and it hurts. But um, what can we say? Yeah, just have to move on, take it on the chain and move on. Yeah, well, anyway, guys, I appreciate anyone who's joined in live as well. Leave your thoughts in the comments as well. And uh, we'll get back to you on that. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos, which will be coming up over the weekend as well. Huge thanks to Gary for joining me all the way from Cardiff, his hotel. Wi-Fi is not amazing, Gary, I will say. Okay. But we make do with what we got. Okay. Cheers, guys.